Hello chess lovers, Soren here and I have a very fascinating attacking game for you played by English chess master Henry Ernest Atkins, who is best known for his unparalleled record of winning the British Chess Championship 9 times in 11 attempts. His opponent is Herbert Levy Jacobs and this game was played in 1915 in London. Now let's see what happened on the board. Atkin started the game with e4 and e5 by Jacobs, d4, he takes d4 and c3, white is choosing a very sharp Danish gambit. In this opening, white sacrifices one or two pawns for the sake of rapid development and the attack, d takes c3, bishop c4, white is also allowing black to capture on b2, but black responded with knight f6, but actually c takes b2 is also good. And if bishop takes b2, then black can give a check from b4 square and then knight f6. And actually, with a proper opening knowledge, black can easily gain advantage. But in the game after bishop c4, knight f6 was played. Now comes knight f3. White allows black to capture on e4 and then castles king's side, knight d6. Right now the bishop on c4 is hanging, but Atkins captured on c3 and sacrificed his bishop as well. This is insane, guys. Knight takes c4 was played. Now comes rook e1 check, bishop e7. As you can see, black king is still stuck in the center of the board and now white will start targeting black king. Now comes knight d5, intensifying the pin, knight c6, bishop g5 f6 and rook c1. Well, instead of playing rook c1, bishop f4 could give white better chances with the idea of capturing on c7 and trapping black queen. And if d6, then white can capture on e7 and then can give a check from a4 square and then queen takes c4. Though after d4, queen b4, king f7, still black stands much better. Though white has some attacking chances, but black has two extra pawns. Let's go back, but in the game after f6, rook c1 was played. The bishop was hanging and white is counter-attacking black knight. And a dubious move by black b5, well, it was better simply to castle king side. If rook takes c4, then f takes g5. But in the game after rook c1, we see b5, which allowed Atkins to go for another insane move. This time he sacrificed his rook on c4 square. b takes c4. And another insane move, this time knight e5. White is opening up the queen's diagonal. Right now, actually, black has several ways of maintaining winning chances. Black can either play king f8 or can castle king side or can even capture on e5 either with the pawn or with the knight. But after knight e5, black chose the worst move and captured on g5, which actually allows white to gain a huge advantage. Now comes queen h5 check, g6, and another fantastic move this time, knight f6 check. With his last move, white is forcing black to accept the sacrifice, otherwise if a move like king f8 then simply queen h6 checkmate. After bishop takes f6 we see knight takes g6, discover check. Queen e7, well if king f7 then white can give a discover check and then can capture on c6 and then on d8 again white is winning. Or after knight takes g6 if bishop e7 then simply knight takes h8 followed by queen f7 checkmate. In the game after knight takes g6 we see queen e7. Of course now the simple knight takes e7 is winning easily but Atkins went for another insane move. This time he captured on e7 with the rook. Bishop takes e7, knight e5 discovered check, king d8, knight f7 check, king e8 and knight d6 double check. And once the king went on d8 square, this time Atkins sacrificed his queen and believe it or not, but finally black resigned. If rook takes e8, then knight f7 and we will see this brutal smothered maid on the board. This was simply a unique game, guys. Henry Atkins sacrificed every possible piece and only with the knight left on the board he managed to smother his opponent's king. Truly a fantastic game. Look at this position. 
Thanks for watching. Here are more suggestions for you. For more games, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I will see you in the next video.